A warm greeting, today is Friday, August 25, 2023. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. In this video, we will be discussing the current situation with Invest 93, which is a low-pressure system located in the Western Caribbean Sea. It's showing signs of cyclonic development. This disturbance will be moving slowly over the next few days through the Northwest Caribbean region, just east of the Yucatan Peninsula and south of Pinar del Rio in western Cuba. Those in the state of Quintana Roo in Mexico, Pinar del Rio in Cuba, and the state of Florida in the United States should closely monitor the forecast as this is likely to become the next tropical storm of the season. Before discussing the projected path and intensity, as well as the effects on the Yucatan Peninsula, western Cuba, and Florida, I wanted to briefly mention Tropical Storm Franklin. It's located north of Puerto Rico and has shown erratic movement towards the south during today. However, it's expected to turn north soon. The storm's circulation center is displaced west of the strongest thunderstorm and precipitation area. The storm has also developed a strong band, known as the Cyclone's Tail, extending over the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. This band has brought heavy rainfall to Puerto Rico and parts of the Dominican Republic, causing some local flooding. Despite the repositioning of the circulation center southward earlier today, the forecast indicates a northward movement. Thus, it doesn't pose a threat to Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, or the Dominican Republic, except for the heavy showers, especially in the saturated soils of the latter. The atmospheric conditions will significantly improve over the next 24 hours, allowing for strengthening as it moves north-northwest. The National Hurricane Center's official forecast maintains a trajectory toward the north-northwest, with the expectation that it will become the second hurricane of the 2023 season during Sunday night or Monday morning. It will likely continue to strengthen, possibly becoming a Category 2 hurricane by Wednesday afternoon, nearing major hurricane status. The good news is that the most significant effects of future Hurricane Franklin are likely to stay to the west of Bermuda. Local effects will involve cyclonic surges, gusty winds, and some precipitation potentially affecting the island on Monday night and Tuesday. Let's also discuss the rest of the Atlantic. As you can see, the Atlantic remains very active. In fact, as of 2 p.m., the National Hurricane Center introduced a new area with potential cyclonic development associated with a new tropical wave emerging from Western Africa. It might encounter marginally favorable conditions for development. We will have time to discuss this tropical wave, but for now, long-term models favor a northwestward trajectory, and it appears not to pose a threat to the Caribbean. Now, let's move on to Invest 93, which currently has an 80% chance of cyclonic development as it moves over the Gulf of Mexico. Looking at the visible satellite image of this region, you can observe that the low-pressure system is generating significant rain over parts of western Cuba and some regions of the Quintana Roo coast. Weather conditions will continue to deteriorate throughout the weekend, leading to a rainy event that could cause local flooding. With its slow movement, favorable conditions for strengthening are expected. It's possible that a tropical depression will form over the weekend as it moves between the Yucatan Peninsula and Pinar del Rio in Cuba. Since this has been designated as Invest 93, specialized forecasts are emerging. For example, here's the projected path forecast. It's expected to move northwest over the next 24 to 36 hours, passing very close to the northern corner of Quintana Roo. However, remember that the most active rainfall is located northeast of the circulation. Pinar del Rio will experience significant rainfall, with accumulations we'll discuss shortly. By Sunday or Monday, it should turn north-northeast. New trends indicate it could pass near or over parts of the Big Bend region in Florida. Florida residents, especially in the northern region including the Panhandle, should be attentive. In terms of intensity, gradual strengthening is forecasted over the next three to four days. Some models even project it to become a Category 1 hurricane just before reaching Florida. This suggests favorable conditions for moderate strengthening over the coming days. Let's take a look at the latest runs of the best global models. Here we have the American model, the GFS. Notice its projection, showing the potential formation of a tropical depression to the east of the Yucatan Peninsula by Monday afternoon. From there, it turns north-northeast, potentially making landfall as a Category 1 hurricane in the Florida Panhandle. The GFS is trending towards a stronger system. If it remains a tropical storm, it might track more towards the central part of Florida, between Tampa and Tallahassee. We still need to see how much it strengthens to determine the exact final trajectory. Now, let's look at the forecast from the European model. You can see that the European model has the low-pressure system moving slowly over or near the Yucatan Peninsula from Saturday morning to Sunday. It's not until Monday afternoon or evening that a tropical depression forms between the Yucatan Peninsula and Pinar del Rio. Then, 
it starts that north-northeast turn on Tuesday. In its latest forecast, it has a strong tropical storm moving over Florida's Big Bend, just north of Tampa, moving on to Gainesville and Jacksonville on Wednesday morning. We also have the forecast from the German model. In its latest run, it shows a strong tropical storm moving over the city of Tampa during Tuesday afternoon. As you can see, there are multiple scenarios, and it's important for those from Tampa to the Florida Panhandle to stay informed about this future cyclone, as there is still some uncertainty about whether it will move over the central northern part of the state or the Florida Panhandle. This variability in the forecast is evident in the ensemble members of the GFS model. While some show a weaker system moving near or just north of Tampa, others depict a trajectory further west, indicating a strong tropical storm or hurricane moving over the Florida Panhandle. There's still considerable uncertainty regarding the final trajectory. Although the most likely scenario is that it will move over some part of Florida's Big Bend. The ensemble members of the European model present a similar situation. Although there's a range of scenarios, many members have this future cyclone moving over the Big Bend region of Florida as a strong tropical storm or Category 1 hurricane. Now, let's discuss the expected effects on Quintana Roo, Pinar del Rio, and Florida. Let's start by looking at the wind gust forecast. According to the GFS model, some parts of Pinar del Rio could experience tropical storm force winds, ranging from 60 to 80 km per hour, especially during Monday night and Tuesday morning. In the projected trajectory passing near Playa del Carmen and Cancun, the most active wind area would be to the northeast of the circulation. Therefore, at the moment, Quintana Roo is not likely to experience tropical storm force winds. Similarly, the heaviest rainfall is expected over western Cuba. The European model's estimations for maximum rainfall range from 150 to 250 mm, potentially causing flooding in the affected region. For Quintana Roo, estimated rainfall ranges between 80 to 100 mm. While it will be rainy, it shouldn't pose a major problem, at least based on today's information. When this system moves towards Florida, for instance, the GFS model's trajectory, which brings it just south of Tallahassee, indicates tropical storm force winds from Tampa to Tallahassee with wind gusts ranging from 50 to 75 miles per hour. The GFS shows a strong tropical storm or Category 1 hurricane affecting this area. However, considering a slightly more eastward trajectory, as shown by the European model, you can see that tropical storm force winds could affect a large portion of central and northern Florida Peninsula. It's important for those from Port St. Lucie to Tampa, all areas north of Tampa, to pay attention to the forecast for this future cyclone. In terms of rainfall, you can also see that estimated accumulations range from 5 to 8 inches. For example, with a westward trajectory as shown by the GFS, maximum rainfall accumulations will affect the Florida Panhandle, including parts of southern Alabama and Georgia. With a trajectory more to the east, like the one indicated by the European model, estimated rainfall accumulations could affect coastal areas of the Florida Peninsula, including Tampa and Cape Coral, with 3 to 5 inches of rain, especially in the central northern parts of the state. For southern Georgia, some accumulations could reach 5 inches of rain. Contrary to what we discussed yesterday, today's models indicate a trend toward a wetter system that could potentially cause flooding issues in Florida. That wraps up the update on Invest93. Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay informed about upcoming videos. If you live in Quintana Roo, Mexico, Pinar del Rio, Cuba, or the state of Florida, pay close attention over the weekend. I hope you all have an excellent evening. I'll be back with a new video tomorrow. Goodbye for now.